Welcome back to the darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Thanks for watching Dietrich Wrench Person DIY. Today's video, I'm actually going to take the 2003 stock radio out of our Forerunner. The control, it goes, shifts a lot forwards and backwards, but if you touch it just a little bit, the radio reception isn't that great anymore. It has no USB for the charging, so all this is kind of a pain, especially for long distance trips. So we were looking to get something for our budget. And bonus, I found this Boss Radio here, which is a really cool touchscreen system. It has the Apple CarPlay, and it also has Android Auto. Huge bonuses, you see right out of the back here, it has two USBs. You can only run one on Android Auto, both can't be obviously at the same time, so you have to have one phone hooked up to one port at all times for that. And then the other one's just charging. So all we'll do is move this to the center console of the Forerunner because it has no USB ports to charge your phones. This is under 300 bucks just with this and the rear camera alone and that was one of the coolest parts about this bundle. Yeah, you can see here on the box though, it's got basically everything you can need, especially if you're going to be doing long trips. Huge bonuses for this. All the links to everything as usual, all of that will be in my description. The rear camera it comes with, you can see here. You will, if you have something like any sort of mid-sized vehicle, smaller vehicles, it has a camera cord for you to run it to the rear already. But I bought a pretty high quality extension one. It's just an AV cable. One single one is all you need. So this one I think is 10 feet, so I'll have plenty of room. I don't want to run it all along the roof liner through the tailgate of the Forerunner. Sure, one of the big bonuses of the Forerunner has the buttons on the steering wheel that works excellent. So I wanted to keep that part. Uh, it also has an amp in the rear. I don't want to mess with that at all. Don't really care to replace the door speakers. They actually sound pretty good. They don't have any issues. It's just the head unit's not very good and it's super old. So might as well get rid of it. <laughs> it's giving me issues. You do need a nice little crux interface though. And this kit is huge. It's, it literally fits all foreigners. They have one that will fit whatever vehicle you have as well. And if you, if this is what keeps your steering wheel controls and it allows me the ability to still use the stock amp in the rear. So this is a huge bonus. It has a little box here, and uh, I guess people miss this all the time because if you read reviews, they're fairly mixed. But on the back of the instructions, it tells you this is the gain box and you should adjust it based on your stock radio settings before. So I'll make sure to do that. And also, you will pick whatever harnesses you need based on your Forerunner. I'm only gonna use like half of this wiring. It does come with this microphone too for hands-free, which is pretty cool. You can like mount it up near the A-pillar or somewhere like where you're steering, put it on the top of the column as a little adhesive piece. Kind of nice. Always good to have hands free. Now the crux harnesses, they will need to be connected. This is a section that goes into the Boss radio here. And this is the harness that will go into the actual car. And you can see both ends are going to be bare once you pull the little wire pieces off. Something you also need is a good wire stripper. This is what I highly recommend. Great, great buy. These are super, super easy to use versus the old ones where you like pinch and pull on the wiring. It's a huge pain, especially in the vehicle. You can't really get your hand in there, you're cutting your hands up. Not worth it. Now to connect these, you can do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just do some heat shrink and some soldering. It's pretty much the easiest way to do it. You can do it where it's inside nice and warm and it's not so cold out also, big bonus. And uh, it has longevity factor. You don't have to worry about any sort of issues with any sort of interference or wiring, what have you. Your other option is to use one of these little butt connectors, which is, I mean, for what I'm actually gonna be doing next, this is actually a fuse block jumper. This will give me free ignition and I could put a fuse on it. So I could just butt this right up to it and that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know, I just feel like I have so many harness things all touching and connecting. Might as well keep them connected really well with solder. For this, what I'm gonna do is my own decision really for the front camera because this was like under 20 bucks. This is a really good deal too. And this is almost identical. You're gonna have your AV cable and this is gonna to need to be power. And so what you can do, what they tell you to do is put this through your reverse light and you can do that if you want. Some people just jump it right to the radio wire. Uh, I don't really think like putting the load of two more cameras on top of your radio, your brand new radio, that's not a great idea. 
So I will put this to an actual fuse. It comes with a 15, so I'll just do that. Just run two 15s through it because you gotta have a way to connect it. That's a little block here for two. I have a voltmeter over here as well. You hit that into wherever the ignition is gonna come up for positive. You turn the key on, it will be turning on just like the radio. It's the same exact thing, but much safer. These guys are super cheap. I got a whole pack of five of them. So I think it was like six or seven bucks for them. And on top of that, this is a great time for you to get a little mix pack for whatever your vehicle may have. These are super cheap and it's always good to have a few in your vehicle and then just keep the rest in your garage. For tools, don't need much. The cheaper Amazon camera is separate from my actual boss bundle. Came with a panel piece, which is awesome. You do need one of them. I also have my own. A little bit more serious but sometimes you need two of them to really get some of the stubborn like roof pieces off for example where I'm gonna be running the rear camera you don't need much else besides that uh, you need a we're gonna be taking off a lot of the plastics uh, literally all the center console to get to the top radio piece in the dash and then underneath the leg area uh, is like a big panel so be doing that for the Phillips screwdriver a ratchet you're gonna need an extension and then just a 10 millimeter socket so that's all you need pretty easy lastly and definitely not leastly, USB 3.0. This is, you have different types of mounts, and this one, the Forerunner has spare blocks in the center console here, and you can actually get a Dremel, which I have here, I'll show you that in a moment, and cut out a small black piece and pop this in there. It has these little pinch guys that pinch it on. It's kind of a pain after Dremel it, but I've checked the comments, and apparently I know it's supposed to be like 21, 21 or something like that. I have the note somewhere. It's like 18 millimeters high by 21 long or something like this. So you do need to be nice and precise. If this style isn't your thing, what you can do, because you might not have this sort of setup or you don't want to buy a Dremel, whatever. This I see work in a lot of people's cars and they actually take the cigarette lighter out and this fits inside of it. It also can be used for like for who knows boats and all kinds of other crazy things. It has like this really big mounting system. You can see here, this is like a nice little bracket and then it has all these different setups you can have and even a little waterproof cover. Kind of cool. Not what I'm gonna need at all, but uh, it is good to have because I can just drill this right near the bottom on the driver's side. This is gonna be the one that we use for car play and all of this. So I kind of keep it down low out of the way and just run a cord right up to the phone holder on the dashboard and it will kind of be slicking out of the way. Good, uh, good investment on, on a good radio. All of it's pretty fairly budget considering <laughs> this is getting a lot of new features into a super old vehicle if you ask me, you know. Um, we're going to try to keep the forerunner for as long as we possibly can, so let's get to work. Now, one thing I do want to cover before we get started on the repair, you always want to, if you have this SRS airbag module like most newer cars do now, what you want to make sure is that you leave this plugged in while the car is on, otherwise you could set off your airbags or have an airbag light come on and then have to go to the dealer and it's really expensive. So what I'm going to do is just tuck this inside.
And just like that, we are all done. Both cameras hooked up, wireless mic I put right over the steering column, and the rear camera I put like on the headliner area. I just put two little screws in there, nothing too serious. Totally forgot I have a big, huge bike rack on the back of our Forerunner, and that's not gonna work for a camera being right on the license plate mount. So went ahead and put it on the roof. Looks awesome, as you can see in the video. Super pleased with everything. The radio is actually super high quality. The hands-free, you could reply with text and everything. Very cool. Please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Time to clean this big, huge mess up behind me. Bye.